Hello everyone, Ricky Brathor here again, real estate lawyer, real estate broker. I've had a series of inquiries come through the office, more particular from listing brokers or sellers when the buyer is looking for an extension on the closing. Now, normal practice is for the buyer's broker to have their buyer sign an amendment to the agreement of purchase and sale to extend the closing date. As a seller, you don't have to accept that. If you are considering accepting it, there's a couple of points I want to raise here. Now, what will normally happen is the listing broker will receive that document, they'll talk to the seller, sellers be okay with the extension and they'll sign it and send it back and then the transaction is extended, no problem. My advice as an attorney is that you have to carefully consider what is being asked of you, look at what your obligations are and then go back. So as an example, if somebody asks me to amend the contract to have the date extended, let's say the closing date's 15th of February, we're now pushing it to the 15th of March, one month. In this situation, my first recommendation to the seller that I would represent would be that one, the statement of adjustments is to remain as of the original date of closing, meaning that taxes, maintenance, anything that would have been adjusted in the statement of adjustments would remain as of the 15th of February. This way, any per diem costs over and above the original closing date would be borne and would be the responsibility of the new buyer. They wouldn't be the responsibility of the seller. Next thing is that any sort of mortgage on the property, if you have a mortgage on the property, you're carrying per day interest or per diem interest. So we would also recommend that you push that off to the buyer because again, it is through their advice that you are extending the closing and you're uh, quite frankly accommodating their situation. The third thing we look for is an additional deposit. It's not always feasible and I can understand some people have an apprehension to this, but my opinion of the matter is that if you're extending the transaction because someone's requesting you to do so, you want more money on the table, you want to know that their money is where their mouth is. If they're saying they're going to close in another two weeks or a month or whatever it is, another $20,000 deposit, another $5,000, $10,000, whatever it is, whatever token amount you can get out of them, you should get out of them. Now in extreme situations, if it's the day of closing itself, we didn't have advance notice of this. Now the buyer says, I need more time to satisfy my funding requirements. In this specific instance, not only do we ask for the things that I've just mentioned previously, we also ask for the buyers to sign an irrevocable direction stating that in the event that the deal does not close on the new agreed closing date, the buyer thereby forfeits the original deposit and any additional deposit without having to execute a mutual release. This means from the seller's perspective, the seller gets the deposit. If there's a breach on final closing, they then proceed to list the property or do what they have to. The money that the buyers put down as a deposit is not stuck in the brokerage's trust account because there's a clear direction to release those funds to the seller. I hope this video helps. If you have any questions, concerns, give us a shout. We're more than happy to help. Bye for now.